Let's see if we can get that. Trivia. Well, let's move on to the trivia because I have so many questions. Um, yeah, I won't even talk about my questions. I'll just start reading. This movie is the first and only of 2021 music. time cartoon characters from Walt Disney and Warner Brothers have appeared together on screen. Yes, so wild. I'm like, what? When Eddie takes Roger Rabbit into the back room of the bar where Dolores works to cut apart the handcuffs, the lamp from the ceiling is bumped and swinging. Lots of extra work was needed to make the shadows match between the actual room shots and the animation. Today, bump the lamp is a term used by many Disney employees to refer to going that extra mile on an effect just to make it a little more special, even though most audience members will never notice it. So yes, I did notice this. They're in that back room and the lamp is swinging. And I remember Dolores grabs it and stops it, which I thought was a really cool moment. It almost felt improvisational. And the light that that would cast on your live action people, it's not casting the same light on your animation. And this is so cool that a lot of extra work was needed to make the shadows match. Yeah, wow, with an estimated budget of 70 million, this is the most expensive film produced in the 1980s and had the longest on-screen premise for a film. Mm -hmm. A technical masterpiece. I couldn't imagine making this. I have no frame of reference and I just am in awe of how they did this. I could never. Since the movie was being made by Disney's Touchstone Pictures, Warner Brothers would only allow use of their biggest tune stars, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, if they got as much screen time as Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. For that reason, they were always in pairs, such as the piano between Daffy and Donald, the parachute scene with Bugs and Mickey. This was continued with Porky Pig and Tinkerbell at the end of the movie. Wow, cool, so they had to have equal screen time. Great little deal they cut. On special edition DVDs, Mekas recounts that he had stated in a newspaper interview that Bill Murray was his and executive producer Steven Spielberg's original choice for the role of Eddie. Tim Curry auditioned for the role of Judge Doom. Every frame of the movie that featured a mixture of animation and live action had to be printed up as a still photograph. An animator would then draw the particular illustration for that frame, one frame, on tracing paper set on top of the photo. The outline drawing then had to be hand colored. Once that was done, the drawing had to be comp composted back into the original frame using an optical printer. Wow. wow. That's this is so hard, you guys. Frame by frame. I don't know if you're familiar. Um, if you're into film in general, you know that most movies are shot at 24 frames a second, which means there's 24 still images per second of movie runtime. So if you just take that and multiply it across how many seconds of film in a scene with a cartoon in it, you're looking at the, the most work. The line, I'm not bad, I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> movie history. Voted as the number 83 100 greatest movie lines of all time. By premiere in 2007. Okay, by one publication. Oh, this is interesting. During production, there was disagreement over the way the Looney Tune characters should look. Warner Brothers wanted the filmmakers to use the characters as they appeared in their merchandising at the time, while the producers insisted on having the characters looking the way they had looked during the time period when the film is set. Dummy footage using the modern designs was sent to War the Brothers for Warner Brothers for approval, while the animators used the period-appropriate designs in the actual film. That's cool. I like that. To give Jessica's ample bosom an unusual bounce, her supervising animator, Russell Hall, reversed the natural up and down movements of her breasts as she walked. They bounced up when the, a real woman's breast bounced down and vice versa. What? Yeah, I Those bounced that. up. 82,080 frames of animation were drawn. Wow. Remember what I said about the frames? Including storyboards and concept art. Animation director Richard Williams estimates that well over 1 million drawings were done for the movie. Yes. Wow. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> I, I cannot critique this movie. Holy f it's amazing. That's insanity. Yes, I knew it. They were segregating against the tunes. The Ink and Paint Club's policy of letting of only letting tunes into the onto the premises as entertainers and employees, not as customers, is a reference to numerous segregated venues during the mid 20th century, such yeah. as Harlem's Cotton Club. The venue was located in an African American neighborhood. The performers and staff were African American, and the shows often had pandering jungle themes. Yeah. Pandering jungle themes only white people were allowed in as customers. Yeah, I totally got that. Like, during the production, one of the biggest challenges faced by the makers of the film was how to get the cartoon characters to realistically interact with real on-set props. This was ultimately, ultimately accomplished in two different ways. Certain props, such as Baby Herman's cigar, or the plates Roger smashes over his head, were moved on set via motion control machines, hooked yeah. up to an operator who would move the objects in exactly the, the desired manner. Then in post-production, the character was simply drawn over the machine. 
The other way of doing it was using puppeteers. This was most clearly seen in the scene. <laughs> seen in the scene. This was most clearly scene. seen in the Ink and Paint Club. The glasses held by the octopus bartender were in fact being controlled by puppeteers from above, while the trays carried by the penguin leaders were on sticks being controlled from below. The wires and the sticks were simply removed in post-production and the characters added in. Whoa! The tunnel leading to Toontown is the Mount Hollywood Tunnel in Los Angeles and is frequently used in movies and for television as a generic tunnel. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this is from a novel. Who censored Roger Rabbit? Eddie Valiant's initial 30-second scroll through Marine Cartoon Studios was so complex, involving over 180 individual elements, that when it was assembled with the film pieces, it created stacks 8 feet in height. Crazy! Okay, let's see if we can answer any of my specific questions. Yeah, my one question was why Roger Rabbit? Why use him? I don't understand the significance. He was not- he was no Mickey at the time. Oh, okay, so I'm like off like crazy. I thought Roger Rabbit came, was like already established as like, because when I was little, I would watch these Disney sing-alongs. They were called Disney sing-along songs and Roger Rabbit would be in there. It looks like, according to Wikipedia, Roger Rabbit first appeared in Gary K. Wolf's 1981 novel, Who Censored Roger Rabbit? <laughs> Weird. So this is Roger Rabbit's first movie appearance. Like he was not in anything pre this. Wow, and then, okay, I just want to add, so we've looked at the trivia, I've like said my thoughts, I wanted to talk about, um, Bob Hoskins. The In-N-Out Burger. I was like, looking at how the hell It made the TMZ show. <laughs> it made, it, it <laughs> made a new <laughs> record for most hamburger sold at an at a In-N-Out Hoskins Burger in a day. Over 9,100 oh my goodness. hamburgers in one day. Oh, no. Friends. Oh, um, in order to crash I hope it's not that way when they open in Nampa. Well, and so all of the live action shooting for this it will be for about a week, way before I think. any of the oh, 